Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone, regular rollers time, let's roll. We'll start off one sent by Mike who wrote about this 2021 Topps Museum Collection quad relic of Aaron Judge, Mike Trout, Chris Bryant, and Andrew McCutcheon. It's numbered out of 75. He wrote, what I found appealing about this card was that it features four past Major League Baseball MVPs and colorful jersey relics. I tried negotiating with the seller who was at first trying to sell the card for $39.95 or best offer. And after going back and forth a bit, it still seemed a bit apart. Just my luck, there was an auction of the same card with a lower number to 75 that had sold that I was also keeping an eye on for the price that I ended up getting uh, for this one. Yeah, very cool card here, and I, I agree with you. Four MVPs on one card, that's uh, that's that's pretty nice and you know quite quite rare. You don't see that very often. And it's a really nice added touch that all four jerseys are just sort of a, a different color, just sort of gives a nice... A nice, uh, nice bonus, you know, bonus look to this very cool uh, modern card. Next one was sent by Thomas. Wrote, I just bought a 40 card lot of vintage baseball cards that included a 1961 top stand Musial, which was, in my opinion, X mint condition and uh, the obvious gem of the lot. I've since received the cards and started listing them, but when I was looking at eBay comps on raw 61 tops Musial cards in X uh, X near mint condition, I came across this recent sale and I couldn't believe my eyes. Is this a reprint? Is this a terrible mistake by the seller? What do you make of this listing? Yeah, I was looking this over. I don't. I can't make any. I can't figure this one out either. 1961 top Stan Musial. Uh, they, they say X Mint in the title. That probably looks a little generous, but it's certainly a, a solid mid grade card. The seller is a, a well known seller with a lot of lot of feedback, and this was a buy it now for four dollars. Was had to be a mistake. Is this uh, this card is worth well more than four dollars in this condition? And you know, four dollars is what you know this card would go for in run over by a truck condition. So. Uh, you know, twenty, thirty, forty dollars is probably more, more reasonable ballpark for what this card should have sold for. So I don't, don't know what happened. It was probably just a mistake from the seller. It, did, it does not appear to be a reprint of any kind. I think this was just a mistake by the seller and a you know lucky purchase for the buyer. Here's another example of a uh, mistake by the seller. This was sent by Guy who wrote, "As far as bad listings go, this has to be one of the worst." I'll be shocked if I actually get the card. Uh, the seller has one feedback, but if I do, this will just go to the top of my better cards list asap. It's a 1 out of 10 LeBron, uh, and any 1 out of 10 LeBron any year is a good buy at $60. I even sent an offer for 50 but couldn't risk someone else seeing it and didn't want to lose this card over a measly $10, so I bought it now for uh, for 60 And Guy followed up and said that he did get the card, and yeah, this is a one out of, a, a LeBron James card, serial number out of 10, and he's spot on. You know, any LeBron card out of 10 is going to probably be, for the most part, a good buy at $60. And the listing just says LeBron James. Uh, you know, n nothing, no other details given, no uh, year or brand or serial number or anything like that. So, uh, sort of a sort of a strange listing here. But uh, congrats, congrats to Guy for the pickup. This was sent by Mark, who wrote, "I love your regular rollers because it gives me a hope for finding a great deal." While well, I hit pay dirt on this one, I purchased this 375 card Los Angeles Dodger lot with a winning bid of 9.99 plus 20 dollars shipping. I held my breath waiting for the dreaded cancellation, but the seller graciously accepted my bid and shipped every card. The lot was filled with parallels, rookies, numbered cards, and of course a lot of base, but what a great find. Top rookie cards include Piazza, several Outman, Chrome, uh, May, Bueller, Verdugo. Yeah, I mean, you know, great lot for, great value lot here. A lot of nice Clayton Kershaw cards as well, inserts and, and refractors and things like that. And for me, like, you spending $30 or $35 line or, or whatever it is here on a lot like this is such a better way to spend, uh, you know, money in the hobby as a collector than, say, opening a box where you're just going to get, you know, 40 base cards you don't really want, and a couple inserts. Here, you just look at look at how much value you're getting as a collector, especially if you're a Dodger fan or whatever. And you can find lots like this on eBay. I mean, you know, I, I don't see any big money cards in here, but collector value is just uh, just tremendous here for, for $35. That's sort of my takeaway from this listing. Next one is sent by Nate the Great, who wrote, I love this Fleer Relic set from 2001. Is this full of vintage Hall of Famers? I own five of them, but when I saw this Hack Wilson Bat Relic for $14.95, I couldn't believe it. I did a little research, and there are not many Hack Wilson cards, period, and the few relics I saw on eBay were all from 2017 National Treasures and much more expensive. I feel like this was a good candidate for Vintage Bargain of the Week. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, I mean, Hack Wilson, you know, he played in the, I don't know, the 20s and the 30s, and Hall of Famer, and he still owns the record for a single season uh, RBI record, 191 RBIs in 1930. And, I mean, how many how many relic cards can he have? Not many. And how many can he have moving forward? Probably, you know, none or very, very, very few. Uh, just not something you're going to see very often. Nice piece of history here for $15. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. That's sort of a, a vintage bargain. Obviously not a vintage card, but uh, same idea. Next one was sent by Jeremy, who wrote, See what you think. This label looks off and the card registration looks poor to me. 
I messaged the seller and they are backing up the authenticity, claiming this is how old labels used to be. Uh, am I wrong? So we got a 1985 Topps Mark McGuire rookie here. It's graded PSA Gem Mint 10. Just at first glance, the card seems like it might be crooked in the case, but I actually think it's because the it's, there's like a, a slant cut to the card or a diamond cut to the card. It's a little bit crooked. If you look at like the left border, it's a little bit wider at the top than at the bottom. And that sort of thing always bothered my eye quite a bit. But uh, yeah, no, this is, this is uh, as far as I can tell, this is a legit older PSA label. Uh, this is, is how they used to, used to look. Uh, I don't know, more than 10 years ago at this point. Uh, before they had the hologram and just sort of, you know, with the uh, slightly different font, things like that. But yeah, as far as I can tell, this is a this is a, a totally legit PSA Gem Mint 10 copy of the card. And it's a good example of how, you know, PSA has gotten stricter. I don't think this would get a 10 today, given the uh, given the crooked cut. And it went for uh, $760. That's probably, you know, roughly market value of a PSA 10. But again, interesting just, just to note that this card would probably not grade a t uh, PSA 10 today. This was sent by Lyle, who I don't think I can lose with this pickup. I purchased all seven cards with shipping for $30. I know none of these guys are future Hall of Famers, but seven graded cards with five of them being PSA 10s is a steal. I'm pretty sure I can double my money at a card show while putting them back up on eBay individually. Uh, yeah, you know, when I first got started as a dealer, this I bought a lot of lots like this. And, you know, the reselling game is not just, you know, high dollar stuff. You can do it with low dollar stuff, and it's actually kind of easier to find stuff at, at, at the low dollar level, such as this uh, here. Seven cards for basically $4 a card. And, yeah, there's no home runs here, but, yeah, you can you can easily make well more than $30 uh, off this lot, you know, with just a little bit of effort. This one sent by Drew, who wrote, My submission starts off with a 2003 Bowman X-Fractors lot of Barry Bonds and Ken Griffey Jr. The price was low and I was hoping to maybe, uh, maybe snag the lot, sell the Griffey, and keep the Bonds for my PC. On the day the auctions were supposed to end, the listing surpassed my target price. I was a little bummed but decided to look at other listings. I came across one basketball card lot in particular. It was still at 99 cents with just a couple hours to go. Some decent cards for the price, but that uh, the one that really caught my eye was the Scotty Pippen. I could see clear as day that it was a 2003 Topps Chrome and knowing the border was supposed to be white, this had to be the black refractor number to 500. This is one of the most iconic modern sets, and just being associated with a LeBron rookie makes this card worth more than a regular Pippin Black Refractor. So I put in a bit of $50 knowing that with comps and uh, the rarity I would at least make a profit on that price. I was pleased to see that I got it for $15 and some change plus shipping. Not only did I get that lot, but I also got a, a, this baseball lot with a cool Jeter Relic, Acuna Walmart Ice, and more for an additional $5 with shipping combined. I'm going to piece out everything else on uh, Com C. Uh, maybe sell the, Walt, uh, the Walton autos on eBay and the Pippin should be pure profit. Goes to show you, you can always turn an L into a W. Just have to keep looking. Next one was sent by Farron. I found these vintage cards on eBay described as have writing on it. While many of these cards from the seller have an X mark and use the same description, some of the, these look like legitimate autographs or of Hall of Famers. The end prices surprise me because it looks like the bidders think they are authentic autographs, but nowhere does the seller even mention signatures or autos. Are these bidders getting a good deal? I was tempted to bid on some, but was worried that they could be fake. Yeah, so this one's, this one's, these are interesting. These, I don't know, I can't tell if these are good. I'm not an autograph expert. I would certainly guess that they're not, not good or they're fakes. Uh, but, I mean, some of the autographs look, look decent. Uh, I, I really don't know. The prices, yeah, have gone much higher than if these were fake autographs, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, especially like the Willie Stargell. If that's a fake autograph, that card's, you know, maybe worth a quarter. And it's gone for 27 bucks here. Uh, now, if they are good autographs, some of these will will be will be bargains. But that's uh, that's quite quite the gamble there. And the, the seller has done, you know, absolutely nothing wrong here, in my opinion. Just listed the card. These look like original cards. But then and said ha has writing on it, not claiming that they're original autographs or not. Uh, so... I guess some of the buyers here taking a bit of a risk. Uh, that's a risk I, I personally would not take, but maybe they're okay with it. And I'll finish on a vintage bargain. This was sent by David who wrote, Good morning and congratulations on your recent used Toyota Camry sponsorship deal. It's been a long time coming. Thank you, David. Uh, I love vintage basketball and think there are, uh, once again, real opportunities to grab nice bargains of all-time greats on eBay, especially when you consider what you have to spend to get modern rookie cards of guys from the current class who are total risky plays. Check out this 1971 Oscar Robertson PSA 3 I picked up today for uh, 80 Australian dollars plus shipping. That equates to around 55 US dollars when you include shipping. Yes, it's beaten up, tipped, a little creased and off-centered, but I don't mind at all. I actually really like that look on vintage cards and I uh, just can't afford 
the PSA 9 to 10 versions. Really happy to add a nice Oscar Robertson card to the PC. And yeah, totally agree. You know, fantastic way to spend 50 bucks or 60 bucks, whatever it was in the hobby. All time great here. Uh, you know, 50 year old card or, or approaching that. And yeah, very, very presentable uh, PSA 3 grade. But that's it for this week's regular rollers. Thank you everyone as always for watching and for all your submissions. Really appreciate it. And whether you are high or regular, keep on rolling. Thanks everyone.